Hello, I want to talk you through the mock uh, approaches section. So the first question was, uh, according to the biological approach, which of the following statements is true? So it said environment may influence the expression of a genotype. Genotype is just the expression of the environment. Outside influences cannot affect the expression of a genotype and phenotype is the only expression of the genotype. So let's start with um, B. Phenotype is the only expression of the genotype. That makes absolutely no sense because um, they're two different things. Um, C says outside influences cannot affect the expression of the genotype. Well, that's not true because it, it can be affected uh, by external things. Um, genotype is just the expression of the environment. That's not true because that's a phenotype. And then environment may influence the expression of a genotype. That's true. Um, outside influences do have an, have an impact on the expression of that genotype. So was the first one. Um, number two, so look at the differences between negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement uh, and punishment. Any type of reinforcement means that the behaviour is more likely to happen. Any types of punishment mean that it's less likely to happen. So you want to stop the behaviour. Um, so positive reinforcement is when you give them something to make them continue that behaviour. So you might give them a treat chocolate, sticker, whatever, praise. Uh, negative reinforcement is the removal of something unpleasant so that they repeat the behaviour. So I might remove my nagging of somebody so that they will tidy up. And then that will reinforce them to carry on tidying up because they want to avoid the negativeness of somebody nagging them. Punishment is when you um, have some kind of negative consequence, but you want to stop the behaviour. So every time you do something uh, bad that you don't want the person to repeat, you want them to stop it. If you add something, so that's positive punishment, you're giving them something to stop that from happening. So you might um, give them a negative comment or something. Uh, whereas if you are doing negative punishment, that's where you remove something. So I might like take someone's PlayStation off them so that they behave um, Oh, my lights have just gone off. <laughs> Let me go and turn my lights off. I don't know how to pause it. Sorry about that. Um, so the right answer for this one was B. Negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement increase the likelihood that a behaviour will be repeated. Uh, for the next question, briefly describe one role of the unconscious according to the psychodynamic approach. Uh, the unconscious mind is there to protect the conscious mind from any kind of like anxiety or um, any kind of trauma or conflict or whatever. And it does this by using defence mechanisms. So it'll use things like repression to push that anxiety or that traumatic experience down into the unconscious mind. So then it won't impact you in your everyday life. That's what that question was one, wanting from you. Um, another thing that you can say is that it's um, like the driving force of your personality. Um, and you've got kind of like all your unconscious things in, in your where not your unconscious, all your kind of like uh, bad things about you in your unconscious mind. But that was a little bit more difficult to get to your marks if you answered like that. So on the mark scheme, it said things about any conflict that you've experienced during the psychosexual stage, like the Oedipus complex might get repressed into the unconscious mind and your sexual desires might be in there. Um, so a lot of people got one out of two for that question, but it would have been better to say protect it from anxiety, use of defence mechanisms such as repression or whatever, that those were the better answers. For the question about mediation processes, you had this question on the last cap. I don't know why some of you aren't getting this right still. It, it, you mustn't have looked at the cap and the answer and prepped this, um, which is worrying because every time you do a cap, anything that you didn't get right, you should be looking at it and trying to fill those gaps in so that when it comes to the exam, you you know the answer to the questions because you've anything that you got wrong before you've filled in and corrected. Uh, the mediation process, it's, thing, it's the arm, so it's like attention, um, retention, uh, motivation, all those kind of things. So it basically just wanted, say attention, and then say why that Tiger advert would get your attention. So give an example, like it, it's quite, um, you know, it's got an England rugby player that'll catch your attention. Um, retention, because it's quite catchy, they're like singing or something like that. There's a phrase, you can put the phrase in quotes, that would have been really good. Um, and then, you know, motivation, 
um, I think they get positively reinforced in it. So you could have mentioned that, so then you would be motivated to do it yourself, vicarious reinforcement, that kind of thing. Um, but you needed to mention the mediation process. You need to mention the terms, attention, retention, um, and you can't just list them. You've got to kind of give one and then link it to the scenario, or give another, link it to the scenario. So because it's six marks, you need to do it three times. Um, if you um, did it more than that, it's fine, but you, you only need to do it like three times. It was enough. A couple of people put like two links, so you needed three to get the six marks. Um, the next question is about um, why the company have used a famous rugby player. You need to mention that it's a role model and therefore you identify with the role model. So you need that term on there really. I think it was probably a bit generous when I marked these. I probably gave it if you just put role model. But you need to say they're more like to imitate the behaviour of the uh, of that character. Um, so it's got this, so it's two parts, role model and then imitating, that got you the two. Uh, would have been better with identification on though. The next question was about calculate the percentage increase in sales of the tiger to male customers and give you answers to two significant figures. So a lot of people lost a mark because you didn't do that. Hopefully what we've done in class recently will help with that. Um, but basically what you need to do, you need to, because it's asking for males, you want the 4,688 minus the 2,522, so before and after, so find the difference between those two. You got a mark for that, so you might have got one out of three. Um, then you needed, so that gives you the answer of 2,166. Then you need to divide that by the males before the advert, so 2,522. And then that'll give you a 0. Um, 858842 but if you times it by 100 that'll give you the percentage or if you can just look at it you'll be able to convert it but it wants it to two significant figures so um it was 85.8842 to two significant figures meaning the eight and the six the number so the eight and the five the number after it is an eight so round it up ends up being 86 percent um so the answer was 86 percent the next question was asking about um, how it could be modified, so the advert could be modified to increase it for so the sales for female customers. You literally had to just say, put a female actor in there, that's all you had to say, um, or a celebrity in there. And then the question on Vunt, this was, this was answered all right um, for a lot of people, but then some people... Uh, it was obvious that you hadn't prepped it, and it was on the list to prep, so I'm, I'm pretty concerned that you didn't answer it well because you were told to prep it and you haven't prepped it so I don't know what you're doing um it was 3a01 and 5a03 so you need some description about Vunt um for example the father of experimental psychology he's a structuralist um he had um, introspection and what that is so talking about the metronome and, and all of that kind of stuff um talking about having the first lab um, all of that kind of stuff would have got you away on one marks. The better answers linked it to the emergence of science. So you couldn't really get top marks unless you mentioned about the emergence of science because you weren't really engaging with the question. So you're kind of trying to explain how Vunt has made psychology more scientific. So why is it more scientific? So the thing about, you know, the introspection, it was trying to measure and operationalise internal thoughts which is making it more scientific. So you just need to link to that in the question and you probably would have got top marks. So the evaluation bit, again, they're in the book, these. So I don't, some of you are making your own points up, but I mean, they were okay, but they're not fully developed because you're doing it under time pressure and you're kind of making them up rather than using what's in the book that's already been well considered and, you know, they'll get you the marks because they're in full peel. So for example, um, the introspection technique has got lots of practical applications. It's used in a lot of studies, so it's obviously got some merit and it's obviously considered scientific because it's still being used today in, you know, studies that are conducted in labs and stuff like that. So we need to make some comment about that. The Griffith study, the gambling study, there was also another study, I think it was Hunter, um, about the happiness. You could have mentioned that one. The Griffith one's a bit better because it, it's actually speaking out loud what they're thinking when they're gambling, which is what introspection is. So it gave insight into the cognitive biases that people were having when they were gambling, which then allowed people to get treated for gambling. So it's got practical applications. So that's one point, but you do need to link that point to the emergence of science. So it's a scientific method that then leads to a leads to a benefit in society so that was one point you could have made 
you could have made a point as well about things being controlled in a lab and and how that's kind of helped the emergence of science but it's a bit of a weaker point but then if you want to get into the top band you need to kind of mention it somewhere um, and then a weakness a weakness is that is the point about watson so watson's a behaviorist and watson suggested that yeah okay you used introspection but it, it's not scientific because you're not fully measuring it you're not operationalizing those variables because you can't observe them so behaviorists are all about observing and measuring things um, and if you can't see it they say that it's not scientific so you can't really um you know people that are saying what they're thinking might be subjective they might be showing you know social desirability bias or it might not actually be what they're thinking and you could contrast that point with the Griffiths study because when people are gambling would they really be saying what they're really thinking would they like you know you don't know do you um, and so you know therefore because of that it being subjective this is how it links to kind of science is that you can't um, have like general principles and laws that you then follow that explain behaviour because that's what science is about we've got a general law that applies to everyone well if it's subjective it's going to be different every time you're going to have issues with like reliability of results they're going to be different every time people do them because of the subjective nature of them uh, which means that you can't explain everyone's behavior it's a very individual kind of ideographic explanation not a non-athetic one you see all these terms that i'm using and i'm kind of explaining like it, it's linked to science this is what it wanted from you so it's not just kind of regurgitating what's in the in the booklet as such it's it's engaging with that what does it mean to be scientific what does that actually mean and linking to that um also, you can mention a point about data because the introspection will get you lots of qualitative data, which is another unscientific thing because of interpretation problems. Um, so again, another another iffy thing about science. So suggesting that it, it's probably not scientific. Um, so you could have mentioned all these things to link it to that, whether it's a science or not. If you didn't do that, you probably got um, seven out of eight because it just needs to be linked to get that. Um, so you might have put the strength and weakness on there, but you might not have quite linked to that. Uh, so that's a tip for that one. And if you got less than that, you didn't prep it because the information was in the book. You could have literally just copied what it was. Um, so have a look at that again if that was you.